We have seen an example of a PIEFG, the perfect information extensive form game, transform into a normal form game. And uh, we have also seen how you can find the, uh, the usual uh, concepts of equilibrium, like the Nash equilibrium, pure strategy Nash equilibrium in that transformed NFG. But we, we have also uh, concluded that there are certain outcomes in that uh, ESNE, which does not really is a credible threat. So let us look at one more example and this will be the running example for this module uh, which will also uh, show some of those uh, phenomena and we will see how we can mitigate that problem. So here uh, this is the game tree so there are two players player one and player two. Uh, so player one plays in the first round player two plays in the second round. Uh, if uh, it goes in this uh, in this uh, branch of the tree then uh, after two's play the game ends. Uh, if it goes to this uh, uh, branch and if uh, 2 plays F then there is another turn for player 1 to play and that ends in this following way. At the terminal nodes uh, you can see the corresponding utilities of all these players. Now what are the strategies as we have defined in the previous module for the extensive form game? Uh, it is the complete contingency plan what player 1 can do at every possible uh, state of the game where that is a player, every possible history of the game, non-terminal history where uh, this player is a, is playing. So player one plays at the at the uh, origin and also at this history which is BF. So here. So therefore, at this uh, two points, it can take uh, uh, actions like AG. So the strategy of this player one uh, could be written as AG AH. So this means that uh, uh, at the first uh, history where it is a player, it is uh, choosing uh, the action A and when the second um, uh, occasion where that player is again playing, it is picking the uh, action H. Similarly, BG and BH uh, for, for player 1. Similarly, player 2 can play either at this node or at this node at these two non-terminal histories and uh, they are based on whatever actions they have picked. So it can be C, E, C, F, D, E and D, F. So you can do a very similar exercise that we did in the last module, transform this game into a normal form game and also try to find out what are the PSNEs. And uh, let me give you the answer here. Uh, the, uh, there are three PSNEs in this case, AGCF, AHCF and PHCE. These are the uh, three possible outcomes. Now, uh, uh, like the previous example, there is certain things which are not really very credible. So if you look at these two uh, strategy profiles, player one uh, is, uh, is playing in the second round here, uh, this player is playing the uh, action H. So what does it mean? Uh, if the player, um, so player one can play H only when it is at this node and uh, if this node is ever reached in this game, do you think player 1 will play H? Because if player 1 plays H, it gets an utility of 1, while by playing G, it gets an utility of 2. So uh, this goes against the idea of rationality that we have defined, that whenever there is an option, uh, wherever a player can pick an action which maximizes its utility, it will always pick that. So this is not consistent with that notion of uh, rationality. So therefore, even though this is uh, this turns out to be a, a pure strategy Nash equilibrium, this threat or this um, outcome is not really credible. And uh, the problem here is that the when we are transforming the game, we are actually losing this information that this uh, this player can actually observe the uh, the outcome here. Player one can observe and then pick its action. So our equilibrium notion uh, should also change based, based on which kind of games we are choosing. So we, we should uh, look at a notion of rational outcome uh, where it considers the history and ensures utility maximization at every possible history. And that is exactly where we bring in the concept of subgame. So by the name you can kind of guess what subgames are. 
so uh, it is a game that is rooted at an intermediate vertex or a non-terminal history so the subgame of a, a PIEFGG rooted at a history H is the restriction of this game G uh, to the descendants of H. So suppose we are at a history uh, of B. So let's say this is uh, this is one history. So uh, this history is nothing but B because uh, there is only uh, one action that has been picked by player one. So at that history, um, the subtree rooted at this history this subtree we are going to call that as the sub game uh, rooted at uh, this history age and we are also going to define the set of all sub games of g uh, which is the collection of all sub games at some history of g so if we collect together all possible non terminal histories and uh, look at the corresponding sub games then the list of uh, sub games we are going to call that the set of sub games of g now, uh, as we have already hinted uh, that uh, our uh, equilibrium concept should uh, look at every subgame and essentially try to find out an equilibrium that is uh, uh, appropriate for that subgame. Uh, so that is the notion of subgame perfection. The subgame perfection idea is essentially talking about the best response of the player who is at that uh, subgame, uh, and this should hold for every subgame of this game. So, what is the definition of a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium? So, this is a refinement of the uh, uh, equilibrium notion that we have defined for the normal form game. So, the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium of an PIEFG uh, are all such strategy profiles S such that for any subgame of G prime of G, the restriction of S to G prime is a PSNE of G prime. So, notice that this is this should be a PSNE of that uh, of that subgame. And by restriction, you just uh, prune all the other strategies which is not which is not relevant for G prime. So removing all those strategies, whatever remain remains, that is the restriction of S to G prime. So you, we can look at the uh, the corresponding um, uh, example, the same example that we have uh, started with. So we have seen that there are three PSNEs, but uh, are they all of uh, are all of them uh, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium? And uh, let's see one by one so if we look at uh, this uh, Nash equilibrium your strategy Nash equilibrium and we restrict that to this particular uh, set this particular sub game of this game then we can see that uh, the restriction of this strategy so let's say this is s1 and this uh, the second strategy is s2 so then this profile if you look at s1 s2 this profiles restriction to g prime if we want to call it that way so where this is g g prime uh, so this will only be h because there is only one player remaining and its uh, uh, action will be h and the other player has no uh, nothing to play because this player does not play so it's like uh, uh, empty now you can clearly see that this cannot be a pure strategy nash equilibrium in this uh, reduced game g prime because in this game this player can uh, player uh, one can clearly improve if it plays G. So H is not a, a Nash equilibrium, a Nash equilibrium strategy for this player here. So similarly, uh, similarly you can rule out this outcome as well. But if you look at this AG comma CF, you can see that every for every possible such subgame. So if you look at this uh, G comma, so this uh, subgame G prime that we have uh, looked at, if you restrict it to here then all that you have is uh, g comma f of course that is a, a, a strategy pure strategy nash equilibrium for for player uh, for both the players uh, similarly if you look at this sub game there also it's it's best because uh, their player 2 is going to play c which is the best response for for this player because this utility is larger than this one and finally if you look at the whole uh, sub game rooted at uh, rooted at the at the root node uh, then also you will find that ag comma cf is a nash equilibrium for that case so um, summarizing this uh, ag comma cf survives uh, this test of uh, being the uh, optimal thing uh, being a psne at all possible sub games of this uh, game g 
So therefore, this is a, a SPNE subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. The other two are uh, other two equilibrium are not uh, SPNEs. Now the natural question is, how should we compute this uh, 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 SPNE subgame perfect Nash equilibrium? Uh, so we have already seen that uh, this uh, starts with so this uh, idea of uh, subgame perfection starts with all possible subgames of this game. So therefore, we should actually look at um, the uh, the sub the subgames uh, from from a bottom up fashion because we already know that if uh, if uh, there exists some sort of a uh, equilibrium uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium uh, at the most lower part of this game. So, for instance, in this part of the game, in the uh, uh, in the games in the games which uh, considers this as a subgame this uh, strategy should certainly be uh, uh, consistent with that so the idea here is to essentially use something like a backward induction algorithm so we start from the the leaf nodes and we try to find out what are the uh, PO strategy nash equilibrium in this uh, in this sub game and then uh, move upwards keeping that as the uh, as one of the outcomes in that sub game so let us uh, uh, illustrate this with uh, with this example so that we'll be able to understand. So let us look at this particular uh, node first. So here player one is the player and uh, you are trying to find out what is the pure strategy Nash equilibrium at that uh, sub game. And you can find that that is G. So fair enough, you can uh, note that down for player player one. And we are going from backward induction. So we are writing everything from right to left now uh, if you now come back at this point where player 2 is a player and uh, we see that uh, now uh, if player 2 plays e yeah, it uh, it gets a utility of 5 but if it plays f then it knows already by because it has already solved the sub game below player 1 is going to play g and it will get an utility of 10 so therefore uh, for player 2 wh wh which is trying to maximize its utility it is going to pick this outcome f similarly at this node where player 2 is also considering which action to play uh, it uh, looks at these two actions c and d and it sees that it uh, gets a higher utility uh, when it plays c so therefore it will it will pick c and that will be written here this is the strategy for player 2 and looking at all these things uh, now at the at the very root player one when it considers playing uh, these two strategies uh, it can either pick a or b if it picks a it knows that two is going to pick c and therefore uh, this uh, the player one is going to get an utility of three while if it plays b then uh, it knows that uh, two is going to play f and then one will pay, play again g and it will get an utility of two so since 3 is larger than 2, it's beneficial for player 1 to pick this action A and AG will be the, the final uh, strategy for player 1. So AG, CF, you can see that this is essentially the same uh, strategy profile that we had actually uh, found to be SPNE uh, by eliminating the PSNEs. Um, but that's, uh, so uh, rather than doing this, rather than finding all PSNEs and ruling out uh, things which are uh, not SPNE, uh, this is a much better algorithm because it will uh, save a lot of time. It's computationally efficient. So uh, here we have the backward induction algorithm written in the form of a uh, pseudocode. What it does is that essentially it is doing some sort of a recursive call. So um, let us go over this step by step. So this is a function backward induction which uh, takes as input a specific history h and it will return uh, the utility of the player who is the player at that h and also the action that is picked by that uh, player. Now uh, we know that if this is a terminal node then there is no action to pick. Uh, it will just return the, uh, the utility of that player of uh, the player who is a player at h and also the second uh, entry that is the action will be a null thing if it is not so if this uh, if uh, statement is false then you start with the, the uh, uh, initializing the best utility of that player so notice that this is the player who is the player at h uh, 
initialize it to a very large negative number, let's say minus infinity. And then you iterate over all possible actions of that player at that history. So this is uh, going over all possible actions available to that player at that history. And you are just appending that action to the current history. So you have uh, this current history here. You append that action that you are considering to play and call the backward induction again. Uh, and uh, whatever you get back, uh, only the uh, the first component, that is the utility component, you are going to uh, consider that as the utility at the child of that uh, pH, of that player that is playing at H. And now it's very simple. If, you, if the uh, utility at that child uh, or the, uh, the current utility is greater than the uh, currently best utility, then you are going to replace, you are going to consider that to be the to be the best utility and also A to be the best action at that uh, stage, right. So that's, uh, uh, that is what we are uh, going to use. And then finally, one, once you are done with uh, this whole for loop and you have found the, the most optimal action there, then you are going to return the, the best utility and also the best action from this player. So this is the backward uh, uh, induction algorithm and we have just used the same algorithm uh, in this form but uh, a little more informally and uh, pictorially.